Cinematography is... I sound like really bored or sleepy or something, don't I? I think it's the quavers. Hello, I'm Tom Siegel, and I've been a cinematographer for the past 40 years. Today, I'm going to be focusing on how filmmakers achieve the desired mood as it relates to lens choices. For instance, what's the difference between a wide lens, a normal lens, and a telephoto lens? You may have noticed some changes just then. At the moment, we're on a very long lens. The camera is very far. Now, let's take a look again. Do I look different as we change focal lengths? You may not notice a huge difference now, but just hold on, because we're getting there. I should start by mentioning that the visual power of any given shot or scene is determined by three principal factors. Composition, lighting, and camera movement. Lens choice impacts each one of these. We describe lenses in terms of something called focal length. But hold on, don't move. Okay, so when light rays pass through a lens, they converge to form a picture on what we call the image plane. That could be film, it could be a digital sensor. And this is how every image you see on a screen is born. The distance between the optical center of that lens and the image plane is called focal length. And it's usually expressed in millimeters. So here's one way to think about it. The longer the focal length, the more narrow your angle of view. The shorter the focal length, the wider your angle of view. The, the shorter longer the focal, the focal length, length the more wider narrow your angle, your angle of view. view. It'll make more sense in a bit, but for now, let's talk about this angle of view thing. When you have just one subject, like me, against a blank background like this, it's hard to see the difference. So we're gonna need some set dressing here to understand angle of view. It's often mixed up with field of view. It's not exactly the same thing. Our choice of lens will not only affect the way I look, but also how much of the world you see behind me and how much you see in front. Remember, the telephoto lens, which we're in now, has a narrow field of view. So you don't see a whole lot behind me. But back in the wide lens, I'm the same size, but you can see much more behind me. To do that, we've had to move the camera much closer. So a director may want more background in a shot, or maybe not. But that's an example of why lens choice is so important. And a blah, blah, blah. Let's look at some examples in film of how these techniques are used. So this is a clip from the movie Drive, directed by Nicholas Winding Refn. Nicholas likes wide lenses, and one of the effects that it has, in particular when you have the singles like this, where you only see Oscar and you don't see Ryan, is it creates a feeling of space between them, that they're very far apart and they're not really connecting. No, actually it's 10, At the same time, Tomorrow, the audience feels their proximity. You know, by this lens choice, that you're close to these people, that you're close to those actors. You can feel it. So it creates a kind of intimacy between the viewer and the performer, even though you're not in a big close-up. Very different feel than if these had been on long lenses, where you feel like you might have been a third-party observer or an objective fly on the wall. Why the f do you want to know who they are? This is a moment in Drive where we use a telephoto lens to really create a feeling of alienation. He's about to make a very radical decision, and we wanted to give the audience a view of that from a more objective, or shall we say voyeuristic, point of view. So the long lens gives the audience a feeling of being farther apart, and the shallow depth of field isolates Ryan from the background. Could you act in a more professional manner, please? You're making them crazy. This is another example of the use of a very wide lens and close proximity to the actors. Once again, it creates a feeling of subjectivity and being right into the physical space where the actors are performing. One of the interesting things about this sequence is that the scene following this is actually done with very long lenses. I'm trying to help you out, and if you play your cards right, these shots that you're seeing now are very close. They're close-ups. And yet, they don't have the same kind of intimacy that a shot has where 
The camera is literally inches from the subject with the wide angle lens. So do it right. But right now we're gonna talk about the normal lens, or what some people call the standard lens. Now, this lens is called normal because it, typically it creates a less stylized image. And what we accept is normal human vision. This is a scene from Bohemian Rhapsody. It's meant to be a romantic scene. It's really meant to show how much these characters love each other. And it's predominantly done with normal lenses. The camera is relatively close to the actors, but not intrusive. Yes. And the relationship between them, the two of them, the size of their head and the frame, is fairly similar. Neither one of them is dominating or predominating the other and you get a, a, a very naturalistic feel of a normal lens. You're going to do such great things. Now, when setting up a shot, all cinematographers have to ask, how do we want the audience to feel about the character we're shooting? Do we want the viewer to like them, empathize with them? Do we want them to feel uncomfortable, claustrophobic? Sorry about that. My point is that different lenses can create a completely different feel with the very same subject. How can we help you? This is a scene in Three Kings where Mark Wahlberg has just been rescued and the scene begins with sort of more uh, normal lenses, even slightly telephoto. So the space between these characters seems quite uh, close. The audience feels like they're watching from the outside, looking in a little bit. And the relationship between foreground and background tends to be very similar. There's moments when the character out of nowhere is wounded. And when George Clooney goes into action here, for a moment we come back to a more subjective, wide angle point of view. We're now starting to get right in there. We feel like we're right up close to the characters. We feel like we're in the middle of the action. Hey, Chief, we need your help. Lens choice can also make two people look right on top of each other or a mile apart. A wide-angle lens will inherently appear to have more perspective than a telephoto. For example, the wide-angle lens makes her sound, makes her feel a lot farther from me than she actually is. But what if we want her to be right in my face? Let's look at a telephoto version of the same exact setup. Notice how with the telephoto lens, it compresses the space between us. It makes us look closer together. She's bigger in frame, but our heads are more the same size relative to one another. And this is what it looks like on a normal lens. And the distance between the sound recordist and myself feels a little more natural, and it's a little more true to the actual space. You're gonna be all right. Here you see an example of with a long lens, the movement is quite exaggerated, and now, Mark Wahlberg is going to get hit, and from this moment on, the action is going to become very, very subjective. And this is a, a good use of an extreme wide-angle lens. The camera is extremely close to the actors, and you'll notice that as characters uh, leave and enter the frame, that movement is greatly exaggerated. You really feel uh, Ice Cube leaning in there. You really feel uh, Clooney coming from afar and coming right into the lens you really almost feel like it's your point of view. These were done with a, a specialty lens called a Fraser lens, which was designed to make wide angle lenses have an extreme depth of field and to be able to get the lens into a very close proximity to the actors. This is from Bohemian Rhapsody. The opening is a big wide swooping in, as you can see, to the stage. Here you see him taking his moment as the band members aren't sure what he's gonna do. The camera continues to come around him and we're still in this wide lens. So as we come around, you can see that the audience is very far from him. But now he's beginning to come into his own. The audience is coming into it. And by using the dolly zoom, we're bringing the audience closer and closer and closer. Freddie's not getting any bigger in the frame but the audience is getting closer simply by changing the focal length of the lens and the proximity of the camera to the subject. Hopefully this video has given you some insight into different lens characteristics and how they're gonna impact your storytelling. Give four cinematographers the same lenses, the same subject matter, and I guarantee you, you'll have four different results. And that is the beauty of 
cinema. You don't just put any f***ing lens on! Come on!